So for most of the structures in the metacarpus, we're going to be using, as we discussed earlier, a standoff um, and just on the end of the probe. The one time we might not want to be using this standoff is if we're really trying to do a thorough assessment of the suspensory ligament. Depends on the machine you've got, but some machines don't have an adjustable focal depth and you may find that if you've got the standoff on, then um, with a, the probe, that's a high frequency probe, you may not be able to get close enough to the suspensory ligament, particularly the body of the suspensory ligament, if you have the standoff on. When we move down to the branches of the suspensory ligament, you will need the standoff back. If we're going to use a standoff, we need to put a little bit of gel into the standoff hole. Then we're going to pop probe into the standoff. And then we're going to put gel onto the end of the standoff as well. And that just gives us that continuous contact between transducer, standoff, and then also skin. So we've got our leg that's being clipped and cleaned. The gel's been on there soaking in for some while. And we should now be able to get a decent quality image. So we'll just make sure he knows we're coming. Good lad. And we're just going to start off in transverse section. Now, the probe should have a marker on one side. And in this case, it's on this side. By convention, that marker, which corresponds to the marker on the left-hand side of the ultrasound screen, will be on the lateral side of the leg. So in this instance, I'll have the marker pointing out sideways and by, by convention we'll tend to stand, start the scanning with the probe in transverse section. Once we've got the probe in contact with the leg we need to then adjust our ultrasound machine to get a good picture. So here I've got the uh, image, the setting uh, for depth far too, uh, far too deep so I'm just going to reduce that down and we want to be looking at about five to six centimetres for scanning this part of the leg. The other thing is that the whole image looks uniformly too dark. So what I need to do is turn the gain up and that will make everything a little bit brighter and then means I can see that those structures nice and clearly on the screen. At the moment I've got those structures just to the left of midline. So all I'm going to do is bring the probe more to the right and that brings those structures roughly into the centre of the shot and that's where I want them to be. The other thing to bear in mind is that the angle of insonation, so the angle between the probe and the structure you're looking at, in this case the tendon fibres, uh, needs to be as close as we can get to 90 degrees. And actually it's quite sensitive to this. So if I lift the probe up, you'll see that the image virtually disappears. Similarly, if I push the probe downwards, the, probe pretty, uh, the image pretty much disappears. So we need to be able to get that image as best we can. Once we've got the image perfect, that's when we make the fine control on the machine and in this case it's a little bit dark at the top of the, the top of the screen so I can just use the time gain compensation to brighten the top of the screen up there and then also just a little bit at the bottom as well and we now have a nice image that shows all of the structures that we're interested in in good resolution. What we're then going to do once we've done that is to freeze the image and then save it. So once we've got a picture that we like, that we're happy with, we want to save that image. This is a clinical examination and these are clinical records. And it's very easy to go through and forget to save the images, but it is important. So machines will all vary, but you're generally going to have a freeze button. You're then going to want to put some kind of text onto the screen so that you can, you can see which zone you're in and what, uh, what uh, view you've got. Uh, in theory, you should put transverse section with scanning tendons, it's actually uh, fairly obvious which of you, so there's no need really to do that. Um, but in this case, we'll pop a comment on, move our cursor to out somewhere outside of the image, and we're just going to write to a... We can also write TS for transverse section if we like, and enter that. It's also important to record which leg the image relates to. So, for example, in this instance, right foreleg. And then don't forget to save the image. So in this case, just press our save button and that saves the image. And it's important that every time you go through and you get another zone, another picture that you want, you record it because it's important for the clinical records. Happy with that image, unfreeze the machine. And we're going back to the same area. And all we're going to then do is turn the probe through 90 degrees. And if we're on the right side of the leg, we're going to turn it, sorry, on the right leg, we're going to turn anti-clockwise. That's because in the same way that by convention the marker is going to be on the lateral side of the, 
of the uh, image of the horse. We're also going to have the marker on the proximal uh, part of the image for when we're doing the longitudinal sections. As soon as we've done that, you can then see in this view, we've got our long tendon fibers, and they correspond to the same images of the same structures we were seeing in the transverse section. If I freeze that image, we can be certain that we've got a nice, a nice view there. We have the nice long tendon fibers, and we can see all the same structures that we had on the transverse section. It's quite important, again, with this to make sure that you get the correct angle. If I unfreeze that image and just move, you can see how we lose contact one end of the probe, and similarly, we lose contact the other end. Also, if I have the probe off at an odd angle, we lose contrast of the image and the detail. So we want to move around until we're happy that we've got those fibres horizontal, 90 degrees to the plane, and we're seeing the nice long fibre structure. It's worth bearing in mind that the tendon does have a width from medial to lateral. And sometimes if you have a core lesion, um, when you're doing the midline section, it's possible to miss that. So you do want to just move the probe from medial to lateral as best you can to assess the full width of the tendon in the longitudinal section, just so you don't miss anything. Once we've, we're happy with that region, what we're going to do is work our way down the leg through the, the zones 1A, 1B, and so on, all the way down to 3C, so that we've covered the full depth of the leg. And what we want to bear in mind is that particularly lower in the leg, we want to assess each individual structure rather than looking at the whole picture. Sometimes that means that you're going to have to uh, optimise the image for one structure, freeze, save your image, then move your probe slightly, optimise for another structure, and save, and so on.